Hello, everyone. Welcome back to today's episode. Today, you're going to hear about being unapologetically unstoppable. That's a mouthful, isn't it? But hey, that's who we're called to be as kingdom people, unapologetic for who we are in Christ and who Christ is in us, but also unstoppable. Do you ever feel like you're unstoppable? Or maybe that's an area you struggle with. So what does it mean to be unstoppable? Well, today we have on the show, uh, my guest is Jeanette Peterson. She's a business strategist. She's a faith mentor and a military veteran. And after a decade in the military as a cyber security engineer, she realized that her gifts were bigger than the military and she wanted to be with her growing family. She was blessed with God when God transitioned her to entrepreneurship because as she says, you shouldn't have to choose your family or your calling. Why not do both? And I wholeheartedly agree. As a homeschool mom, she helps women build their kingdom businesses with strategy faith, and automation. So welcome to the stage, Jeanette. Hello. I'm so glad to be here, Lisa. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. You know, I love interviewing kingdom women who are showing up in the world. And I love that you're unapologetic and unstoppable that are unapologetic about your faith and you're advancing the kingdom in the marketplace that there's, there's no settling for for status quo, but like, you know what, let's, let's go after the fullness of all that God has for us. Yes. And I kind of feel like you're that kind of a girl. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I'll tell you that I wasn't always that kind though. Like, like being in school, I was always like the shy kid. Nobody ever wanted to talk to me. Cause I was like the nerdy girl. I read a lot of books. I wasn't into what everybody else was. I wasn't popular, but like, as I grew up, I realized who God says that I am and how mm-hmm. he created me. And I could fully step into that and not be scared. Like, I don't have fear over judgment of people because I don't care what they think. I care what God mm. thinks. And I only want to be what he created me to be. I don't want to, I don't want to be anything that man says I have to be, which is why wow. I don't cook. I don't cook at all. <laughs> High five. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. So what, it, what, it, what started to shift for you? You were in the military. Tell me a little bit about that experience for you. How was that? Man, that was a wild ride. Like I was in during the height of the Iraq war. So I went to Iraq. I did a tour there. I was overseas a lot. I I was in Korea and in Germany. And so like during that whole time, I was just trying to be what the Air Force wanted me to be. Like Mm -hmm. that was my God. And then also myself was my God. It was like me doing everything in my power to make things happen. Mm -hmm. And I thought that the military revolved around me, that if I didn't do it, it wasn't going to get done. And so when I got let go in the military. It was like a a military process of they're saying, oh, I had this hip issue. And so they're like, okay, your hip issue is no longer serving us. We're going to let you go. And I was devastated. I was like, but I'm really good at my job. I'm really good at IT. What does my hip have to do with my brain and my fingers? I work in an office. I'm not, if, if it comes down to me being the one to shoot the terrorist, a lot of people have messed up. Like, (laughs) like it's, it's, it's gone. Mm -hmm. Like, so like, okay, what do I need to do? Like, how can I find myself? And through that finding myself, I found God. Well, God mm. found me again. I'll say that. <laughs> wow. Wow. So kind of came back because you had a faith in God before from what I just heard you say. And, but yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was saved when I was like about 12, but then I, I think all of us kind of go through a phase where we, we're not mm-hmm. walking so tightly with him. Yeah. So like I strayed way far. And then when I got out of the military, I went back to being with my faith because that's when I also got pregnant. And I was like, okay, if I'm going to be Jeanette Peterson instead of Sergeant Peterson and mom instead of Sergeant Peterson, I need to know who that person is. Mm. I didn't know who that person was. I just know who Sergeant Peterson was because who the Air Force said I was. But I never figured out who I was as a person. So I was like, okay, I need to figure out what that is. And then once I discovered like the gifts God has given me are like, retarded gifts like like my the way my brain works the way that I like puzzles the way like most people don't do those things because it's just not natural and easy for them but it is for me like where cooking might be really easy for some people that's not my gift like I'm not gonna do that so like I was like okay God if these are the gifts you've given me how can I honor you with these gifts how can mm-hmm. I show people in the kingdom these gifts and help them in their businesses I want to further the kingdom God how do I do that so he was mm-hmm. like okay 
Well, with your business, I want you to help them with automation so they can make more time for their clients mm. and me. And I was like, mm -hmm. okay, I can do that. I can do that. So that's kind of how I started my business. And I love, love, love God and my business. <laughs> <laughs> that is so good. Yeah, well, let's, we're going to talk a bit about that, how God comes into the business as well and how that plays a role. But I I just want to say what you said there and just piggyback on that. You talked about how often we have gifts. And, you know, a lot of times we don't realize what comes naturally because we are bent that way. It's part of our design and personality or maybe a skill set that we've developed that we don't realize that it doesn't come that easy for other people. And we can we can overlook it as a gift. We can overlook it as maybe something that is part of that unique contribution they're meant we are meant to pass on to people and help them with. Um, so I, I'm curious to know now when you help women, you, no, you don't just help women, you help people, right? Oh, no, you help women. No, help women, women, women. women build their kingdom business with strategy, faith, and automation. I love that because we do, we have so much at our fingertips today to be able to give us back our time and automation, doing the automation is gold. What, what do you, just for our listeners, if they're not familiar with that, or maybe some way that you help them do automation, what does that look like? So um, a little bit about that is like, I will take whatever their system is, right? So let's say like you're, you're doing this, this podcast right here. Let's say it's the podcast mm -hmm. sequence. So mm -hmm. I will like help you set up all the automations, automatically have StreamYard come in, automatically get it posted, or use a tool like opus.pro to pull out key things and repurpose that content. So that mm -hmm. way you don't have to do it. There's not a person doing it for you that you have to pay. And it's a lot quicker than if somebody were to do it for you. Mm -hmm. So I set up the systems to be automatic. So that way you don't have to think about it. Another thing that I love doing is the client onboarding system, because when mm -hmm. we onboard our clients, that needs to be like the Disney experience. It needs to be like the runway. Like that's their first, like, in integration with you and they're like okay mm. I'm person a lot of money what what like am i going to have buyer's remorse but as soon as you start laying out the red carpet and you take them by hand and you walk them through the process of onboarding with you they're like oh my goodness okay i can trust this i feel good about this so from like the intake the intake form to their first meeting with you to if you do client gifts or what that looks like um, that whole process, getting them set up with their Google Drive or whatever they have that you need to mm -hmm. give them so you guys can be clients together and work together. I set up all of that as a system for you so that way it's easy for you and it's easy for them. Mm. So do you use... Yeah. I mean, a simplify. I like simple. <laughs> I like simple streamlined things because, <laughs> you know, to save me time because uh, we can waste a lot of time doing things that are repetitive or that can be systematized, right? We don't realize that. Yes. Yes. So I like using pretty much all tools because they're all basically the same. I use a lot of Zapier. I use a lot of Go High Level, um, Kajabi. So I'm curious because there's a lot of automation systems out there. Do you have a, a favorite that you use with your clients or do you kind of source out what is the best for your client? I'm kind of system agnostic, meaning it it's, doesn't matter. So I use a lot of Zapier. So no matter what, there's probably going to be a Zap that I can use. And I just want people to have what they are used to using. There are so many mm -hmm. tools out there, like you said. Sometimes it's like, okay, I learned this tool and now I got to use this tool. And it's just too much for people. So I could I try and make it as easy as possible. Like go high level, Kajabi, any of those kind of platforms, um, any of the mail platforms like Active Campaign or ConvertKit. Mm -hmm. Um really any any kind of tool like um ClickUp or Monday, those project management tools I love. Mm -hmm. But really it's it's anything that makes it easy for them because that's that's who I'm working for, really. I'm working for the business owner. That woman who is like, I am so high level, my brain literally can't take in any more things to make decisions on. Like, it's almost like decision fatigue. Like, I can't mm -hmm. make that decision. I don't know if that ever happens to you, but at the end of the day, I'm like, I can't even think of dinner. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. 
It's so true. It's so true. <laughs> you're, you're an intelligent person. And then all of a sudden you're like, I, I just can't make another decision. <laughs> yes. <laughs> totally. Totally. Then you, then you know what, okay, I need to have, I need to have some systems in place so that I can. <laughs> that, so you're more of a strategist. You come in, kind of yes. see what's working, what's not working, what their needs are, and then help them kind of put some things in place to create systems. Is that right? Yes. I love strategy. Love, love, love. Well, that that is cool because I think that's really powerful to be able to really come in and almost like a diagnostic and, and be able to bring into what is going to work for personality, for lifestyle, for what is it they're trying to create. Now, I know in this as well, you talk about how with God in the picture that you have to let God lead when it comes to your business. There's three things I know you talk about in terms of how does how, what does that look like when you and how did you come to discover that? <laughs> well, most of the people I know, most of my friends, we're all the same. We're all very A type kind of like go getter personalities, yeah. and we like to have the control. And God was just like banging me in the head with surrender, 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 surrender. <laughs> like, like just stop doing things. Let me do things for you. And that's a hard thing for me. I don't know why. Just like relinquishing control. And so when he was saying that, I thought he was saying like, you know, like go teach people about surrender. And I was like, okay, I can, I can do that. And I like took off with it. And he was like, no, I need you to surrender. I need <laughs> you to calm down. I need you to come to me first. And so like, like realizing that, and it's almost like transactional when we think of if I do this, all these things will happen. Like mm -hmm. A plus B equals C. Yeah. But God is not like that. It's like A plus God equals 5 million. You can't even do it, right? So like if you think about like putting God first and surrendering to him first and always putting that first, your math doesn't have to math. It's his math that has to math. You don't That's have to worry about any of that stuff. And it's, sometimes it's so hard for us to like just be in that space of even like like relaxation and surrender mm -hmm. to ourselves rather than even to God. Mm -hmm. So like, I just, I just want people to remember that. Like, it's not about you. It's not about what you can do on your own. It's about what God can do because mm -hmm. he gave you these gifts through him. These are, this is his problem, his gifts, his stuff. And that's what makes us unstoppable. Really. It's not like mm -hmm. anything that we can do, but building those businesses on his principles, like mm -hmm. fasting and praying, like, surrendering like tithing like all of those those biblical principles that we don't always necessarily think are business principles those mm -hmm. are whole christian life principles that we need to be doing for mm -hmm. business praying for a business doing all those things so i it took me a while to learn that because you know i was in the military and mm -hmm. you were you know <laughs> so like when i got on this side of the fence and realizing oh wait it's not just pray sometimes for your business. It's pray always for your business. It's surrender every day. It's like laying down those things every day. It's a practice. Mm. I didn't have a destination. It's That's so good. Yeah. yeah. It's a partnership, right? It's we're in yes. partnership with God. It's so true. You know, there's so many business principles in the Bible that we, we don't realize if when, when we're really digging deeper, like, whoa, <laughs> it's just like <laughs> mind boggling. Like, wow, I didn't see this before. Because and and about wealth creation and things like yes, that, you know, yes, from the kingdom perspective. Um, what so you talk about fit, fasting and praying for your business should be normal. Now, some people say, well, what? Why would you fast and pray for your business? Like, what? What would you say to them? <laughs> I'd be like, well, if you fast and pray for your kids, why don't you fast and pray for your business? And really, it's an extension of you, also, right? Like, mm -hmm. if these are the gifts that God has given you that go through you, that go out of your hands, don't you want everything that comes out of your hands to be blessed too? And that's mm -hmm. part of your business. If I want mm -hmm. my kids to be blessed and my house to be blessed, I want everything I do to be blessed, including my business. And mm -hmm. not just for my own financial gain. Like, yeah. I have no desire to have a Lamborghini, but I do have a desire to make millions, but it's not so that I can be rich. It's so that way I can give back to the kingdom and I can serve the kingdom better. I have yeah. more people on my team. I have more people that I can be putting out there doing all the things like it's that's why, you know what I mean? So like mm -hmm. if you want your business to be fruitful, pray just like you want your kids to be fruitful or your your wallet to be fruitful or whatever you want to be fruitful. Yeah, it's so true. You know, a lot of times uh, and you may have come across this and may have had to work. People say they're in business. They want to have their own business or step into entrepreneurship. And yet there's a resistance 
to creating wealth, especially if a faith-based person said, well, you know, it's like, well, isn't that the reason why you got into business for the first place? <laughs> so that you'd have unlimited potential. <laughs> unlimited. Right. And uh, yeah, so it's kind of funny how that works where we get in like, oh, yes, but I can only go so far. That's not true. God wants us to be abundant and have wealth to give back. It's not just so we can just be rich, but also yeah. he wants us to be comfortable and he loves us. And he, don't you want your kids to be comfortable and loving and have everything mm -hmm. they need even more? So we spoil our kids all the time. Like why wouldn't God want to spoil us? It's I'm not so saying that true. we need to like take everything from God, but like I was reading this book by um, Chris Volatin called mm -hmm. kingdom wealth and riches or something yeah. like that. Yeah. You know, the book. Yeah. And I was like mind blown about how, how much, especially because he's like a well-known prophet. He's so good. He's such a smart man. I was like, oh yes. Why wouldn't I want to make lots of money for the kingdom? If I, if I have the money, who has the money in this world makes the rules. So if, if the kingdom people have the money, we get to make the rules and we get to make them better than people who don't have God's interest in heart. You know what I mean? So so well, true. Let's make money. <laughs> so true. Jeanette, it's so true. You know, is it is a tool in our hands that can open doors but can can create massive influence and change why not put it into the hands of godly people who you know are are have the fear of god on them and will make decisions yes. based on on you know heaven's perspective in that way you know i was listening to an interview a while back by i don't remember his name but he was he's a wealthy businessman he and he's a christian and when he got a hold of he, he started learning about the sex trafficking industry and, and of course, the whole movie, The Sound of Freedom. He, because he had created wealth in his business and he had excess, he now began, he had the means to, to put into the production of that movie. And I'm thinking, look at the impact that that's had on people to bring an awareness of this, but also now to begin to break the chains off of this industry. And that's what money can do. Yes. Right. Yes. <laughs> do you know how many like people have like risen up after that? Like it was not just like, I didn't realize how big of a pandemic that was yeah. until I saw the movie and I was like, holy cow. And my awareness and your awareness has been changed because this one man that made a lot of money in his business that had nothing to do with this, but yeah. he was able to, he had that provision from God. Yeah, exactly. Yes. The Joseph's. Yes. So it's yes. so good. <laughs> so what, is, what are some other things that you want to share with our listeners in terms of the whole concept of how your, how your faith interacts with business and um, what are some things that you've had to learn along the way to be successful in what you do? I, the, the biggest thing I think that I've had to learn is that if God takes it away from you, like the opening doors thing and sh shutting doors, if you pray those prayers, he will do those things. Mm. And if he shuts doors, that just means he has something better for you. Because sometimes mm. like I used to, like at the beginning, I would be offended by doors being shut in my face or whatever that looked like, because I thought there was something about me. And then I was like, it's not about me. It's about God. Like, Maybe wow. God has something bigger. Maybe God has something that I don't see. Maybe God has a different place for me. And it, it would be like, I am totally qualified for this. God, why aren't you giving me this? Why can't I do this? And I found out later because he had something even bigger for me than if I was stuck in that job or doing that one thing with that client, it would not have gone well. Mm. And I would not have been able to do kingdom work. Mm. Like I was following money at that point in my life and not God totally. Mm hmm so, I mean, that's one thing. If you ask God for anything in your business, ask him to open doors and shut doors and don't, don't be surprised when he does those things. <laughs> so be willing to, yeah, be willing to walk the journey out. So yes. I know that prayer, I mean, we already talked about prayer and fasting and what have you seen, what difference have you seen in, in your business as you've incorporated prayer? Because you, you say prayer and fasting should be normal yes, for, yes. you know, for business owners. What does that look like for you? And, and how have you seen that impacting your business? I would say that the, the number one thing is that I'm not chasing after clients in my own strength. Mm. I, I do my thing. I'm consistent, but I'm not like, chasing every person down, trying to get their, their answer or their yes, trying to work with me. I am more of like a coming from a place of 
If they come, it's because God told them to come to me to work with me. And if not, that's okay too. And then bless them on their way out. But if you're not praying and fasting, that's when you get to hear from God and telling him, him telling you what the, your next thing is, what your next mm. iteration is, because we're always pivoting. So he's yeah. like, all right, all right, now it's time for you to do this. Now I need you to offer this. This is what I want you to make next. Mm. And when I listen to God, it's been way more successful than I have to just come up with something like with my coach or something. Mm -hmm. I always have to turn back to God and say, God, is this the right thing? And if he says no, all right, I guess that wasn't it. <laughs> <laughs> It's like your commanding officer, right? Yep, absolutely. <laughs> Trusting that your commanding officer knows what they're doing. But God, of course, more so than any human <laughs> knows what yes. he's doing. So good. So does that mean that you incorporate, say, like I remember years ago, I was in ministry for 17 years and we incorporated, well, even outside of ministry, we incorporated uh, a week, uh, sorry, not a week, a day a week that we would fast. It just became a normal part of our routine that we would have one day a week that we'll be fasting. So is that some of some of what you're talking about or is it stuff like more intentional seasons of fasting or what does that look like? It's more like seasons of fasting. And my last fast I did for seven days and then we're doing another one um, at the end of the month, uh, another seven day fast. And it's just like a rhythm that we do. Mm. I wouldn't say like a like a weekly rhythm, but like almost like a quarterly rhythm. Yeah. To see like, hey, God, all right, I'm going to just dedicate this seven days to just listening to you and like mm -hmm. rewalking with God and refocusing our faith. So that way we can hear his his word and his abundance and and all those things that he has for us, because when if we do it willy nilly, like I feel like it doesn't really count as much because then you get used to it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, like if yeah. I'm just praying for the same things over and over, I just get used to it. But if I'm like, OK, I'm going to. And, and, you know, fasting doesn't always have to be from food, but like in, mm -hmm. for me, it's fasting, anything that takes my mind off God. Mm -hmm. If I'm doing anything that is not pleasing to him or about him or focus for, on him during the seven days, like I'm not going to watch TV for seven days. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just like, all right, if, if I want to refocus on God, anytime they want to like zone out, I'm going to read the Bible. Anytime they want to zone out, I'm going to pray about what mm -hmm. I really want to be thinking about. So I think that's, that's the part of the rhythm that we do. And like in our, in the coaching that I do, we always talk about that. And every, every meeting that we start with is a prayer. Mm -hmm. Every course that we do is starts with the prayer. I've got a whole course on just surrender and what that looks like and creating mm -hmm. the covenant promises with God and just going back to our gifts that we have and how to be fruitful in those gifts and turning, turning everything to God, just like always just a refocus back onto God. That's so good. And so having talked about that now, uh, if someone wanted to connect with you, what's the best way for them to get connected with you? I am on Instagram. Like that's where I, I live. So if you find me, it's Jeanette.Peterson and that's where I'm at. I'm also on all the other ones, YouTube, everything else. And I've got a free gift and it's 40 prayers for your life and your business. And it's at JeanettePeterson.com slash prayers. Awesome. So I can tell that this is not just something you talk about. This is something you live. You yeah. incorporate. <laughs> this is my life. <laughs> yes. God is reworked. It's so powerful. I love, I love how you've integrated all of these biblical principles that we often separate for, you know, ministry or things like that. But really everything we do in life is ministry and yes. uh, you know, for representing God. So thank you so much, Jeanette, for coming on today and sharing your story and sharing the life. And I know that you've done some speaking. What is, because my audience, a lot of them are looking to learn even how to up-level their speaking skills because I'm a speaking coach. And so I, I would love to know what is something that you've learned along the way that helped you become a better speaker? Ooh, I would say... I talk really fast. Like I try not to, but I talk really fast. And then I start to like repeat myself. So what I, I have to do is I have to like stop, take a breath and then like continue going. I think it might be a nervous tick. I don't know. But I, I have to like really be like, okay, Jeanette, pause. Not everybody can understand you if you're talking so fast and you're mumbling. So I just <laughs> stop and pause. <laughs> and most people don't even notice mm -hmm. like, like the receivers. But I have to remember like, I'm not talking for me. I'm talking for them to hear it. So, so good. That's so good. The power of the pause and just to yeah. 
give people time to reflect. So good. Thank you so much, Jeanette. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for coming on today. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in today. If you want to get in touch with Jeanette and find out even to join in this 40 days of prayer and learn how to bring God into your business in a bigger way so that you can have him as your CEO and what that looks like. I know that's a big struggle for many kingdom entrepreneurs is how do we how do we do this? And so I am um, I, I, I hope that inspired you. I hope that brought some help and hope to you. And I want to encourage you to reach out to her for her free uh, 40 days of prayer. And as well as if you are wanting to up level your communication skills, I want to invite you to explore the Kingdom Speakers Academy that we're starting up again here in April to help you become not just a speaker that informs, but one who speaks to transform and bringing about a transformational impact in the lives of others. Because your voice is an instrument of transformation and needs to be heard. So let it be heard. So if there's any way that I can help you, please, please check out the description down below and connect with me about the next round of the Kingdom Speaker Academy so that you can get launched into your I, your place of influence as a speaker. But not just that, so that you can get in front of the right people that you're meant to reach and impact for the kingdom. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. I look forward to connecting with you next time. Make sure you share this episode and subscribe and uh, tell all of your friends about how this episode will help them become a more God-focused in their business. Have a great day, everyone.